Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today is very exciting because I get to mess with a compound known as 5-Azidotetrazole. Along with this compound being insanely explosive, it is also very, very toxic because of its azide group and solubility in solvents, and that includes water. So I'm going to be testing both the dilute and concentrated solutions, and we're going to start out with the dilute solution right here. We're just going to spread it out on the aluminum foil. That was pretty impressive, but let's scale up this dilute solution amount. Good lord, this stuff does not hold back at all. The crystals of this substance are just too powerful for their own good. <laughs> I've been working with all the dilute stuff, but I decided to concentrate it, so I poured it into a beaker and let it all evaporate. And now I have this extremely concentrated solution that is just an oil and it will not evaporate further. So let's do some testing with this. I concentrated some of the oil and they act just like the crystals. I cannot emphasize how these small amounts are just shredding everything. So here I soaked in some of the dilute solution into some cellulose or cotton balls. Could be better. Now let's try some spicy cellulose. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Now let's try an impact test on the uh, concentrated oil, which I like to call essence of destruction. Oh my Christ. Let's just uh, ignore the fact that I just missed that with the hammer, and let's try it again. My aim was literally worse. Let's just move on. As you can clearly see, this oil right here is very, very shock sensitive, even when it's still in solution. I don't know, but this stuff actually seems to be more sensitive and powerful than the isocyanogen tetraazide, dare I say. Here's the toothpick that I was using the entire time to move it around. Let's light it. Oh my god, look at that. Piece of splinter wood hit me. Oh my god. Very brissant. So I'm going to do one more test, and I'm going to scale up all of the explosions that I've been doing. So I'm going to scale it up to four drops of the oil. Keep that in mind. This is four drops of the oil. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, uh, that was four drops of just the base tetralazide compound. Now, this compound can also make salts, so uh, let's do some of the heavy metal salts. So the first salt that we're going to test is the silver salt. Now, according to Engager's paper, the silver salt likes to spontaneously detonate, so uh, that's a little bit scary. However, we're going to push forward and make it, because I want to see how it actually, you know, works. To make this compound is very easy, all I have to do is take some silver nitrate, which is the bottom portion right there, and I'm going to drip in some tetralazide. This yields a nice white precipitate, and we filter this directly from here. At first I was pretty scared of filtering this, but it actually seems to be pretty stable when wet, and it didn't explode at all on me, which is very, very nice. The paper must have been wrong, eh, or this stuff is not the silver azidotetrazole, because when wet, you could scrape this stuff, and it doesn't go off at all. 
Also, you can hit it with a hammer while it's wet, and it's completely insensitive. However, when this stuff dries out, it is completely different. Even the slightest tap leads to instant detonation. Heating it when wet doesn't really do anything. It's still pretty stable. It's actually pretty annoying when wet because it sends its shrapnel everywhere, which is obviously very sensitive when it dries. One little fun and dangerous thing I found to do is that you can actually set up a little minefield and uh, step on it. Just walk it around. <laughs> that is really fun. It's like... So now I just took a few milligrams and spread it out on some aluminum foil and let it dry. And uh, let's heat it up. That was very powerful. So this over salt's pretty fun and all, but I want to move on, so let's try the copper salt. Now for this I just drop in the tetralazide into the copper nitrate solution. After naturally spilling it all over my brick, I filter it and I get my product. The filtered product actually had a really cool blue color, so I'm going to nickname it Danger Blue. This salt is just like the silver one in the sense that it is completely insensitive to all stimuli when wet. However, when dry, again, it is extremely uh, powerful and sensitive. So, here's a little piece that's still a little bit damp, but it's mostly dry, so let's test the sensitivity. <laughs> I think that might be more powerful than the silver salt. Here's a second pile that I made. Let's give it a little scrape. Oh my. So here I spread out a bunch of it and we have at most probably five milligrams. And I let it dry so it's sensitive, so let's test it. Oh, that was uh, excessively powerful. I definitely should not have been that close to it because that was very, very loud. Now we're going to test the direct flame sensitivities of both salts, but I have a hunch that they're going to instantly detonate. So copper doesn't want to exist. Let's try the silver now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my hunch was definitely correct. Another fun thing I found that you can do with these salts is that you can actually wet them and then paint them onto surfaces, and uh, in this case I'm using a can. And then you can let them dry, and once the uh, quote-unquote paint is dry, you can set it off. The blue one was so much easier to paint on, and it was cool, because I just made danger blue paint. Now that they're both dry, let's start with the silver salt. Aw, oh, that's a little disappointing. It didn't even leave a hole. Let's see if the copper one's better. Wow, the copper salt is significantly more powerful. I guess this is one of these rare cases where the copper actually outcompetes the silver. Okay, enough messing around. Let's scale it up. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. That's a pretty good amount of damage for the amount used. I'd probably say that there was around 30 to 40 milligrams on that piece of paper. Mm. Alright, it's danger blue time. Let's see if it's truly more powerful. To be honest, copper's never really impressed me, but uh... It has now. Well, I think it's officially clear about the winner of these salts, uh... This was the silver salt. Obviously did some damage, almost ripped it in half. And uh, here's the copper salt. Yeah, Ex extremely powerful. <laughs> Look at the exit holes. Yeah, uh, definitely the copper salt is much better. That video was very, very fun to make and I actually enjoyed it a lot. If you guys liked it, and want to support me, uh, please consider subscribing.